Hi, my name is Gypsy, and with the help of GTA series videos and r slash GT online, I bring to you a guide to the businesses introduced with the bikers update. The bikers update introduced five new businesses similar to finance and felony, but they're a lot more balanced. Those being the document forgery, the weed farm, counterfeit cash factory, methamphetamine lab, and a cocaine lockup. These businesses can be purchased on the open road in-game website on your clubhouse laptop once you start an MC. You can only do this in public free room sessions, but the way servers have been acting up lately, it isn't that hard to get a solo public lobby to begin with. Each of the businesses have four different locations you can purchase. You are only allowed to own one type of each business at a time. Trading in your business can result in getting some cash back if you're downsizing, or if you're just trading in your business and getting a bigger one, you won't be paying the full price because you'll be putting up your current business for it. Trading in your business will result in all your product and supplies lost as well as all of your upgrades. All of the locations allow you to make the same amount of money and make the same amount of product, so it's always best to go with the cheapest option. So with that out of the way, let's start. You also have the option to purchase or steal supplies for your business. It's always better to steal supplies because the missions are short and easy and and it doesn't eat into your profits like purchasing the supplies would. You also have three upgrade options for each business, an equipment upgrade, staff upgrade, and security upgrade. The equipment upgrade makes your product worth more money, helps use less supplies, and speeds up the process of making your product. The staff upgrade speeds up the process of making the product, like the equipment does. And the security upgrade lessens the chance of your business getting raided by the LSPD or gangs. Once you fill up a business, you can either sell it locally or remotely. Remotely bring in more cash, but also needs more players. However, I haven't seen a sell mission with more than three vehicles, so if you have you and two other friends with you, you should be fine. Also, I wanted to state I'll be speaking in general numbers for the remote section, the more money you get, just to make this video more concise. So if you want all of the information, it will be listed on screen, but I will be speaking in general terms to make this video a bit more concise. So the document forgery office starts at $650,000 and goes up to $1.235 million depending on which property you buy. All of the upgrades cost a grand total of $1,030,000. To fill up the forgery without any upgrades, it takes 5 real time hours to fill up the product bar and it sells for $90,000. With the equipment upgrade, it takes 4 hours to fill up and sells for $108,000. And with both the equipment and staff upgrade, it takes 3 hours to fill up and sells for $126,000. The weed farm starts at $715,000 and goes up to $1,358,000. All of the upgrades cost a grand total of $1,576,000. With no upgrades, it takes 8 hours to fill and sells for $180,000. With the equipment upgrade, it takes 6 hours 40 minutes to fill and sells for $216,000. And with both the equipment and staff upgrade, it takes 5 hours and 20 minutes to fill and sells for $252,000. The counterfeit cash factory starts at $845,000 and goes up to $1.6 million. All of the upgrades cost $1.6 million. With no upgrades, it takes 8 hours to fill and sells for $210,000. With the equipment upgrade, it takes 6 hours 40 minutes to fill and sells for $252,000. With both equipment and staff upgrades, it takes 5 hours 20 minutes to fill and sells for $294,000. The methamphetamine lab starts at $910,000 and goes all the way up to $1,729,000 and it takes the longest to fill. It's probably the worst business you could buy. All of the upgrades cost almost $2 million. With no upgrades, it takes 10 hours to fill and sells for $255,000. With the equipment upgrade, it takes 8 hours to fill and sells for $300,000. And with both the equipment and staff upgrades, it takes 6 hours to fill and sells for $357,000. And finally, the cocaine lockout starts at $975,000 and goes all the way up to $1.8 million. All of the upgrades cost close to $1.9 million. With no upgrades, it takes 8 hours 20 minutes to fill and sells for $300,000. With the equipment upgrade, it takes 6 hours 40 minutes to fill and sells for $360,000. And with both the equipment and staff upgrades, it takes 5 hours to fill and sells for $420,000, making it the best business you could buy. Now you could buy these other businesses and even have one business of each that way you can generate more money, but it will take you a long time to pull your money out. For instance, if you have the cocaine lockup, the cheapest option, which costs $975,000 at the Alamo C, you have all of the upgrades, which cost around $1.9 million. If you own the cheapest lockup at the Alamo C and have all of the upgrades, it'll set you back $2.8 million. To make your money back, you'd have to sell seven full warehouses that take you 35 hours in real time just to fill up your warehouses. That's not counting the time it takes you to sell it. So these businesses aren't really good to be a main money maker. 
but these businesses are good to have just while you're playing the game because your businesses generate product for you while you're playing. For instance, let's say you're playing a specific standard job with your friends, you could play that, you can play a couple setup missions, then in between you can say, hey, give me a second guys, you can go supply your warehouse and then go back to playing. After five hours of playing time, which depending on what kind of player you are, that could be a very long time or that could be a very short time to you because you play a lot, you'll be able to sell your warehouse for $420,000. And the best part about this is you can do this solo. The supply missions, the more people you have with you, the more supplies you have to grab. But you could do this all solo. I've done this all solo. The only time you need people with you is to sell your warehouse. That's it. That is why this is so much better than the Finance and Felony update. In Finance and Felony, to fill up your warehouse, you have to buy each individual crate and pay for it, and you also had a chance of losing that. And you have to have people there with you, otherwise you can only buy one crate at a time because you're only allowed to carry one crate at a time. And after everyone helped you pick up your product, once you sold, they got fucked over in the end because they only get paid five grand. Meanwhile, you're selling for like $2 million. This, however, is a lot better because the only time you need people to help you is to sell. And I'm pretty sure no one's going to get mad if they sell and they only get a couple thousand dollars helping you. So let's talk about the supply missions. The supply missions are fairly easy. There's around 10 different supply missions, and each supply mission have different variations, different gangs you have to fight, different locations, etc. But there's about 10 main ones. The first one is pretty simple, which just involves stealing a vehicle. It's usually picking up a bagger, picking up uh, an armored vehicle, picking up a tampa with supplies in it. There's usually not anyone chasing after you or shooting at you when you do this. There's also a stealth related mission, you can take stealth or just go in guns blazing where you have to take out security guards and look through crates until you find the crate with your product in it. There's another one where you kill gangsters and then steal their van. Or you kill gangsters and throw a flare and steal their uh, supply drop from a plane. Another one involving knocking off gangsters, usually the Aztecas with the ballas off their bikes until you find the gangster with the product. Going around the city finding vans carrying your product. Keeping your wanted level long enough until the police that confiscated the supplies come up and then you steal their police bike. Intimidating a target to find out where your supplies are. Although that only works out if your target doesn't die as soon as you swing at him.
And last, but my favorite, is the bar fight. This is probably the most fun supply mission there is, and every time it comes up on my screen, I get a smile on my face. It involves you going to Tequila La in Los Santos and beating up a couple of bikers in a bar. You're not allowed to have weapons, you're not allowed to use baseball bats, you're only allowed to use your fists, and they have like pool cues and broken glass bottles and bats. You have to fight these guys until one of them drops your product and then get out of there. But even after they've dropped the product, I still go after them anyways because it's just so much fun. It really does make for some cool Rockstar editor screenshots as well. But all of these resupply jobs are very easy and simple. They're not hard at all and they don't take very long either. Now I mentioned that your warehouse can get raided and that's what the security upgrade is for. The security upgrade lessens the chance of your products getting raided. They can be raided by the LSPD or it could be raided by gangsters. Whenever it gets raided, you'll get a phone call telling you to go defend your business. So once you get there, you'd have to defend your business, meaning sitting there and killing gangsters or cops, chasing down the cops or gangsters that already have your product, or my favorite involves taking out a snitch and grabbing his testimony. But these are very hard. You get one life when you're doing this. So it's best to have a couple people with you in your MC to help you out. Because once you die, that's it. If everyone dies, then that's it. Your product is gone. Sometimes it's half of your product, sometimes it's all of your product. It really is just random from what I've seen. As you see this clip here, you can get shot up pretty easily. I rode it in my motorcycle and they all spawned around me. A couple of them I didn't even see spawned right after I pulled in and I just got completely shredded. Now apparently the security upgrade is supposed to lessen your chances of your warehouse is getting raided and from what I've seen that's true, although I haven't been raided that many times. But I will tell you I've been raided with and without security upgrade and both times when I actually killed the gangsters or cops I haven't lost any product. From what I can tell you don't really need security upgrade. It's just there to lessen your chance of getting raided. Although if you're standing in your warehouse the entire time, or you're not in a free room session just sitting there, your warehouse won't get raided. So let's say you're playing heist for instance, you're not going to go into a free mode and then as soon as you get there your warehouse is getting raided. It only get raided if you're just hanging out in a free room. So let's say you want to leave your controller and just rubber band it and sit AFK for a little while. Make sure you're sitting inside of one of your warehouses, that way you won't get raided. I just wanted to say a big thank you to GTA series videos, the users of r slash GTA online on reddit and everyone else listed on screen now for helping me out with this. A lot of people took a lot of time to search through game files to get numbers, play the game, and just sit there in warehouses for a couple hours getting all the numbers and recording it. it. Took a lot of time and effort to get these numbers. Just want to say a huge thanks to these people. I really do appreciate the time and effort they put into getting these numbers. And with that said, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Hopefully I taught you guys something. Don't buy anything except for the cocaine factory if you're gonna buy one, because it's the best one to get. And uh, with that, I guess it's time to make an updated Pacific Standard video. Yeah, it's been a while. See you guys in the next one.